in this container is an old Bell and Howell. Oh, I love the red and the black together. Bell and Howell uh, Focusmatic. No, it's not the brand name of it. It's just an old Bell and Howell um, camera. And you pull up the the holdy thing, and you look through here, and I guess um, this, I don't know, it does stuff. There's a viewer for sharpness, and here's how many feet are left or something, or how many feet, I don't even know. It has like stuff on there, so I don't know what that even means. There's a thing here, I don't know what it does. Uh, I guess this tells you when you're at the end. I don't know. Um, there's sound if you have a mic, which they didn't. This is a remote. I don't know what the hell that means. Um, this is a film Bell and Howell Auto Load Filmo Sound 8. Uh, I guess this is some kind of Super 8. Oh, here's the, the actuating trigger for making movies. Whatever. Um, and I guess this is how you open it. Inside, it says Bell and Howell model 436. Uh, serial number CE8999, made in USA. US patent 3208078, 3297397, and 33128158. I guess this would tell you something about the film inside if you were looking at it. See? You could, you could see where you were at. And that locks it down. And I guess this brings you focus. Like far away or close or I don't know what the hell. Filmo Sound 8. So uh, that's my uh, small tour of the Filmo Sound 8. Focus Manic. Um, there's also a uh, Let's see what else do we have here. I don't know what the hell this is. There's some kind of information inside it about the Kodak Ektachrome 8 super movie film type A. This high speed color film is ideal for making movies indoors or outdoors under low level lighting. I swear to god you had to have like a degree in engineering to do anything before, you know. 1992. I think the side here would be where you would keep uh, film that was done being used. And then on the inside there's another po pocket for a film that you, um, you hadn't yet used. And here's the handy and fashionable adjustable shoulder strap. Additionally, there's this giant Bell and Howell projector that doesn't have any sound in my family. It's the auto load. Oh. It's about as heavy as 20,000 pounds of bricks. I don't know what you're supposed to do with this. Oh, that. So I guess that's your uptake reel. One reel goes here and one reel goes there. I don't remember which goes where. But you can get the motor and the lamp to go independently. And uh, there's, you know, whatever. So you put on the reel there. I guess I could do it. Although it's not in the right position. There's this little these little divots that show you where you're supposed to put the, the reel. Wait, I messed it up. Nah, I really messed it up. Uh, like this. Yeah. There. And then it projects. The whirring sound of awesomeness. And that 
with how people in my family took and watched their movies from about 19... Like somewhere around, like it was definitely in use in 1975, and I don't know how much before then this was in use by my family, and I don't know how long it, like, I know that my grandparents in November of 1986, they brought a bunch of reels to be uh, turned into... VHS, and my grandfather had a VHS camcorder at that point. Uh, so, this doesn't have any information about copyright dates or anything like that, but my grandfather was definitely not using this to, because um, he was the one that took most of the, the video, but my grandmother took some video as well. This was definitely not in use to my memory, so I can't say that it wasn't in use in reality, but it was not in use in my memory um, by the time I came around, which was 1978, and I don't recall there being any photos of me, I mean, not of me, there were, I don't recall any photos of my grandparents using this um, video camera, video camera, this, um, High eight, super, no, it's not high eight, super eight, whatever. It's it's eight. It's super eight, super eight. Um, I don't even know if they, this was used at my parents' wedding in 1971. Anyway, so we're gonna send it off to a good new home now. eBay does not actually take. Uh, I'm not saying that eBay doesn't take this kind of equipment. I'm saying that. It's rare that you're going to sell it on eBay or even to, I mean, forget making a profit, um, whatever profit means. You're just probably not going to sell it on eBay. Um, I don't generally put things like this up on Craigslist because people are very unreliable when they say they're going to come and get your stuff and they never do. So um, I think we're going to donate it to Goodwill. And that is great because it is really, really heavy and we're not using it. So.